Hello, welcome back to another Lord of the Rings live stream. How is everybody doing? We are continuing on today in the Sands of Harad Deluxe Expansion with scenario number two in this cycle. And honestly, what is this cycle called? I'm drawing a blank on the name of the cycle right now. I'm, I completely... Ah, oh well. It'll, it'll come to me. But yeah, so we started out the new cycle last week two weeks ago last time we streamed uh, last time we streamed we started out this cycle and uh i i really enjoyed the first scenario i've heard really good things about this cycle and so i'm excited to dive into this one this time i think we are just kind of like wandering through the the desert and trying not to get too hot and die so that's gonna be fun hey jared how's it going good morning good morning how you doing so yeah so yeah, good stuff. We do actually get to use both of our counters today because we're tracking heat and it's another loss condition, basically a, another timer where heat's going to be going up each round. And if it ever hits 60, we're going to lose the game, which is something we try and avoid here on the channel, but uh, sometimes very unsuccessfully. There, I think there are some ways, like there's a side side quest not a side scheme but there's a side quest in here to lower some of that heat so there are ways to do it but it is effectively a timer the other kind of important thing to look here good morning greg how you doing the other kind of important thing here is it's a lot of questing it's a lot of questing over the three the three stages we have 38 points of questing so that's pretty that's pretty intense um, so we're probably definitely looking at like a, 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 a spirit hero here to kind of offset and give us some bonuses there, but there's also a good number of enemies and well, maybe not a good number of enemies. There are some enemies in here and some of them are pretty mean and multiple attacks and everything. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh, I, I have not seen this art yet. Sorry. This is really cool. I don't know, just like the the sword in the worm. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we probably want some sort of tactics or defense way to to answer everything. And I think allies may not be the best option here, mainly because when an ally enters play, either exhaust it or deal one damage to it. That being said. I kind of want, actually, I have a question, and y'all in the chat know are, are way smarter when it comes to rules questions, so question for y'all. And after an ally enters play, you exhaust it. The way that that is worded, I think that you cannot choose that option for an int, because ints say that they enter play exhausted. It's not saying that they come into play ready and then exhaust, so I would have to deal a damage to an int. Um, if not, that's a fun way to get around it. <laughs> uh, all, all, all of that to be said, I kind of do want to run ints because I do like ints. Uh, also, I find it funny to think of ints running through the desert. <laughs> so I was thinking ints, I was thinking dwarves. There are a couple of AOE damage effects though in here that could be an issue for like a high ally swarm type uh strategy so that could that could be something that we could think about so we could go um go gandalf gandalf is a lot of fun um but yeah so i think i think we we definitely want a spirit hero let's actually just look at the spirit heroes and see if there's anything that jumps out as like this will be fun yeah, ints will come into play exhausted and damaged, which which ints probably prefer anyways. That's kind of what I was thinking, right? Like, because they lean into, hey, if you're damaged, you get an additional benefit, and so I I think that could be kind of fun. Um, so yeah, but let's look at uh blue. Let's look at blue heroes. We're gonna need some pretty major questing power. Um, we could go Curdan. Curdan has the the four. I'm going to remind myself what his ring does because I know that he does have a ring of power. It is. Yeah, here we go. Attached character gains the leadership resource icon. We can exhaust Nara and the attached character to choose and ready up to two allies. 
each of those allies gives plus one attack and plus one defense. That seems kind of fun for a an int build. Just kind of getting a lot of those ready. Hey, Astari, how's it going? Ints, how you doing? Honestly, that's, that sounds kind of fun. Have I ever done that? This is this is something I should probably should remember. It feels like I feel I feel like I have a vague recollection of trying to use Curden with ints. Regardless, that does sound pretty fun. Also, just Nara being able to ready an ally, I think just makes sense for a quest where I have to exhaust my allies when they come into play. Because then we can, well, I guess we are exhausting Curden at that point. We do get a, we do get an additional card draw, which could lead us away from green. But if we're going away from green, we're losing out on a lot of good ends. No, no, no let's try it. Sounds fun. I'm going to go ahead and grab his rings while we're here at it. I'm just going to grab 3x. We may cut it down to 2, but the, the 3x does seem pretty good. At least it's worth starting at that, and we can cut it out if we need to. The other, th the other thing that I think would be kind of fun at some point is to run all the rings of power. So we have uh, Kurdan or Gandalf. We have uh galadriel and elrond i think that could be kind of a fun it's a really high starting threat but i don't know that could be kind of fun if we're doing that we probably do want let's let's just go green let's leave leadership out of the equation so that we can really kind of hammer on these hints um i don't think i want to go treebeard um Yeah, I don't think I want to go Treebeard. I think I want to go the basic route for Treebeard cuz that's going to help the resource smoothing a little bit better than the the hero version here. The yeah, let's just grab 2x Treebeard. Potentially 3. I I could see myself running 3 Treebeards here, but this 4 cost basic ally uh you can he gains resources and you can use resources to pay for ints. That being said, we could go... I mean, Denethor's a fairly decent defensive option, especially if we're going to have a lot of attacks. We are looking at a 12, 12 starting threat, which is ugh, a lot. <laughs> we could go Air Store. We just draw all the cards. Just cycle to exactly what we need. That seems actually kind of crazy. Because Air Store draws three additional cards. You discard all your cards at the end of the round. Curta draws an additional one. That, that seems like too much, but it does sound kind of fun at some point. Really hope we get a treachery canceling hero in the shield. Oh, that'd be cool for champions. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That and that fits on on theme with shield. Oh, alrighty. Go Galdor. Mulligan. Do that Grima. We could just go all the way back to Baravir. I think I think card draw is actually gonna be pretty okay. I'm trying to find if there's anyone that I really don't or I haven't used too too much before. There's one in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, there's a um, Eleanor from the core set, I think. I think there's a couple of things that deal with treacheries in the game, which is pretty cool. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking Galdor could be kind of interesting. We could just go Denethor. Look at the top card of the deck and move the card to the bottom. Yeah. Nice. What are what are the ints that I but we get we have like all of the int stuff in green. It's not just giving up like the allies. Yeah, we got those are three really solid allies. And then we have like int drought and stuff in green too. So 
I feel like green is kind of a requirement here. Yeah. They get plus two hit points. That, I mean, that's so good. Are there other... I don't think so. I usually try and put all of the, like, int stuff together. Denny the Tomato Splat King it is. And the last round, you can kill off Denethor to stay thematically correct after using him the whole game. <laughs> uh, we are, you know, a big fan of Denethor here on the channel. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I can tell you that. We could try we could try like a trap thing. Got a question for you, Aether Knight. How's it going? Welcome. If I enjoy playing Marvel, is getting into this a good idea or would I just play Marvel instead of it? I tried out Arkham Horror and didn't like it as much as Marvel. Why did you not like Arkham Horror as much as Marvel? Is it a theme thing? Um, because at that point it's kind of hard to say. Um the chaos bag? Oh yeah, this is this is um, this is going to be more mechanically, um, sound or not sound. That's not a right word. This is going to be more mechanically similar to Marvel champions in the sense that like, it's pretty programmed. This one is the one that of the three, I think of this as kind of the big deck building one. And we're going to be looking at a scenario and trying to deck build and solve the puzzle of the scenario rather than kind of take it up and take any deck against any scenario. I think Marvel is Marvel's strong suit is that it is really easy to pick up and play. This one requires a little bit more deck building and kind of coming together. And if that's something that you enjoy is I mean this this is a great game. This is my favorite of the 3 mechanically. So and, and thematically. <laughs> but yeah. I think the deck building is just a lot. It's it's a lot here. Let's look at our tactics here. I'll see if we got anything there. The other thing we could do is go leadership because we are going to be getting the leadership icon with uh, our ring of power. I don't know if I... I don't know if I care. We do want to go uh, unexpected courage to ready Curtain to get that four willpower. That's going to be nice. Okay. We got Boromir. I'm going to try and stay away from Baragond. I feel like he's been hitting the table quite frequently recently. And so, we go Bjorn. We could just go the highest amount of threat possible to start us out. Um, Legolas. I do like Legolas. I think I need more of a defensive option than I need a offensive option. Though our, our ints can probably do a lot... Grimborn, you have him. Do I have Grimborn? I don't think I have Grimborn. I don't think I have Grimborn. Also, I only have one page of Tactics Heroes now that I'm looking at it. Let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and grab. Do we go Ents and Dwarfs? That could be kind of fun. Our Ents and Gondor could also work. We got Booming. Oh, I forgot about Skinbark. I don't think I've actually played Skinbark. Dern Dingle. And Beachbone, let's grab two of Beachbone. <laughs> Open those packs. <laughs> I like Lord of the Rings with Marvel. I literally learned the X-Men existed by playing it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I mean, like, I think it's worth trialing. Uh I would say that the the core set of Lord of the Rings is not as strong as Marvel. They do have the updated version of the or like the revised core set which you can buy and you can buy that and then they have like starter decks i'd recommend trying a starter deck as well just to kind of see how all the synergies and how deck building can work in lord of the rings because i feel like it has a huge upgrade from the core set after game of thrones lcg died in your area my partner said pick one and marvel champions was winner nice nice Uh, what, what, I grab Booming, Dern Dingle, that's what I need, Dern Dingle. I, I really like the art on Dwarven Shield. Lord of the Rings is a close second, just a lot of catch up. Oh yeah, there, there's a lot of content out there. That is, that is very, very true. There's a lot of, lot of content. Dern Dingle. Uh, Skinbark. 
When scaling bark is attacking alone against an orc enemy. I don't think I don't think orcs are hanging out in the desert actually. No, I'm thinking about it. It is a four attack, but I think our booming ent is probably gonna be enough to kind of deal with all of that. And we don't need the three drop of the skin bark on our team. It's kind of what I'm thinking. So let's hang off on skin bark. Maybe we throw one of them in there thematically. Do we go eagles as well? Actually, that seems kind of fun. I don't think it's super powerful, but now I'm like we can we can lose and we can try again, um, but eagles and ints. I d I've already done that actually. I I remember that. I've already done that. That would be nah, that's fun. I don't know if there's too many int cards in tactics. I think there's one if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, after an int character takes any amount of damage, ready it. Oh, that character gets plus three attack until the end of the phase. Let's take a boomed and trumpeted, mainly because uh, we're going to be taking a lot of a lot of damage there. I would love a revival of the BattleTech card game as an LCG. Oh, I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with uh, BattleTech. Is that a? I assume that's a co. Is it a cooperative or a competitive? Boomed and trumpeted. Are there any other int items that we need here? I feel like faint could be kind of nice. Nope. All right. Do we grab our third copy of Treebeard quite yet? I don't believe so. Let's go ahead and do that. We are just running. Eagles and Ints is a great deck. Just use the ready card as a staple. You already found it. <laughs> Sweet. I'm out of my... I'm. Oh, here we go. We're good. I was like, I'm out of gray dots. Here we go. Don't worry. We got more sticker sheets. I bought like a huge pack of these stickers one time. <laughs> I have so many of them. Um, okay. Pull Curdan out of there. What are we already at? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, seven. So we're good. Okay, let's grab our let's grab our green ends and let's settle on a We're gonna go wandering, we're gonna go Wellington, we're gonna go probably two X a quick beam. Quick beam will be kind of interesting with um this scenario he's going to be one of the only allies that i think will be able to ready himself in that first round at least on the first stage i don't think that's yeah it's it's actually not a for once you push past stage one it's not as big of a deal i like ants i really like ants ants are fun um Yeah, we've already started. We've already ventured into the three aspects that we're using, or the three spheres that we're using. So, might as well just continue there. I was like, maybe we do want to go leadership, but now nah, we're good. I think we go Elven Light just because of uh, Kurdan being discarding a lot of cards. I think we do go Elven Light. Elrond's council is hard to not include. I've never tried Lord of the Rings. How does it compare to champions in terms of the learning curve? Took me a long time to feel I understood champions. Still not entirely sure I played correctly. I would say it's a little bit steeper. Um, there's, it was designed 10 to 12 years earlier and that does show probably about 10 or eight or so that does show it feels very much like an old school card game um not a bad thing whatsoever uh but yeah it, it does feel like it 
has a little bit more of the stage. It's less streamlined, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That being said, there are amazing reference charts out there, and it is very satisfying once you do kind of learn how to play it. But it can it can be it can be a little challenging. I don't. I'm not trying to dissuade you from trying it because I don't think it's impossible. I would also say that once you have learned one, you can learn the others pretty easily, because um, like they share a, a good good bit of DNA. Maybe it's time for a 2024 Buyer's Guide for Lord of the Rings. I think my Buyer's Guide still holds up. They've announced a couple of cycles, but I've talked about the cycles in that video. I talked about the cycles in that one. And so I think it's I think it still holds up. Also, I haven't played Lord of the Rings, but played Champions in Arkham. I've been thinking of trying. I would highly recommend this one. This one, I think, is the... This is my favorite. Um... I, I also just really like the deck building side of the games. And this one has a lot of that. Go Aragorn. We go Bilbo. Bilbo is kind of interesting. If you go Bilbo, uh, now you're drawing two additional cards. That seems insane. I don't think that. No, I can tell you doing. Also, check out DC Deck Building and Marvel Legendary. Great little games. Yeah. Yeah. I would say those are great. Yeah. I haven't played DC Deck Builder in a hot second, but I played Legendary more recently, which I liked. I'm going to make a decision. <laughs> um... What's today's quest? Hold up. Is that? Today's quest is Desert Crossing. Yeah. Yeah, this is the temperature one. Yeah, we, we're going to be measuring temperature. That's uh that is happening. I'm going to I'm going to go Denethor. We haven't we haven't we haven't played Denethor in a good second. So let's uh let's grab a Denethor. Love the DC deck builder. They just put out the Arkham Asylum one. It's coming out. I know I was going to do some content on that on Man vs. Meeple, um, but then we played Primal. Primal's good. Played DC Deck Builder, but Legendary is another game. I, Legendary is I've played a I played a decent amount, of, <laughs> a stupid amount of Legendary. There's Denethor, Denethor, Curden, and let's find our tactics. I missed the Justice League. Is that JLD? <laughs> uh, what if we? What if we go? Maybe not Bilbo, but what if we go Mary? No, I think we need defensive stuff, right? We need, probably need defensive stuff. Not Baragon. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> we also have a lot of like. Go Bjorn and just like forego defense. Who needs defense, right? The art the art is so good in this game. The yeah, it it's very, very, very solid. Um, I think I'm going to go with Malvlong here. After we engage an enemy, we can add a resource to his pool. There is a decent number of enemies, and we're not going to try and avoid the enemies. And so that can help us resource smooth. Since we're not in leadership, we don't have access to Steward. I guess we technically can get access to Steward because Curden will have a leadership icon i don't know if that's worth running it may still be worth running sneak attacks though let's go ahead and grab gandalf and sneaks sneaky hobbitses oh yeah and galadrim greeting oh actually glorifendel is going to be very solid as well um 
But if we are going to be running... Eh, I, I'm just a little interested because I don't I don't know the pacing of the quest quite yet. So is our are if we run like higher end on the cost curve, are we gonna just be shooting ourselves in the foot because we don't actually have as much time as we normally can to stall out? I don't know. Be something to figure out. And so like running all these which I think like a Gandalf or a tree beard or anything like that will be fine. A good harvest is actually kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna set that out. It's another more information smoothing. Where's Gandalf? But those expensive spirit cards might be worth running, steward. That's fair. Spirit cards, expensive. Sp oh, Gladrium's greeting and Glorfindel. That's fair. And and we're going to be able to find it. I think we I think we run a good harvest. Um, we run. There he is. We can run steward. If we grab two x steward, we should be fine. If I recall right, you might not want spoil. <laughs> yeah. The storm comes. While this quest is in the victory display, the first ally played by each player does not require a resource match. That is kind of interesting. Hmm. Okay, a good harvest. Name a sphere until the end of the phase. You can spend resources of any sphere when paying for cards using or belonging to the sphere. Because we have a lot of cycling here, we both have Curtain drawing us an extra card and Elven Light kind of doing a lot of that card cycling. And Elven, yeah, we definitely want Steward of Gondor. Elven Light's going to be uh, a resource tax. Um, a good harvest can help us get Steward of Gondor into play, kind of all that. Good art does sell a game. I think the only, char I think the only character's art that was not the best in Champions was Adam Warlock. Just doesn't look like him whatsoever. Hawkeye is kind of chatty. <laughs> That's fair. Let's go ahead and grab those. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 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 So we have eight slots left. We still haven't picked our leadership hero. We are looking at a 20 starting threat already. Probably don't want that too high. Just remember that Curtin has to discard a card drawn. Oh, yeah. Oh, it has to discard a card drawn that round. I see what you're saying. Do you think we need Elven Light? I was just thinking that we could discard. I, I forgot that. Discard one of those cards. I think we'll cut out Elven Light at that point. I don't know if we need the additional card draw there. That is awkward. R3D3. <laughs> nice. My daughter loves being able to choose female heroes and champions. Is there... A oh, yeah. There's a ton. There, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of different uh, options for female characters as well. A lot of, I mean, like, Lord of the Rings doesn't have the most female characters out of any IP. That being said, there are um, not custom heroes. What am I trying to look for? I Are characters that they have made for the game that are female. Um, but, like, you can see a lot of a lot of female characters jumping. And so, and the female characters are pretty sick, too. There's a lot of really cool ones. Um I was looking at tactics. Maybe Hama could be cool to discard more Elven Light. That could be in that's it. I, I like I like that. I like that a lot. That's interesting. Um I would pay money for a team up card pack, honestly. Oh yeah, I would I would love that. I would love that. If we if we grab Hama, are we okay with like what's our defensive? I guess we have like Dern Dingles and everything. We have we have defensive options. I'm not 
too, too concerned about it. What are our tactic events? Our tactic events. We could. Okay, if we go Hama. Okay, actually, let's let's try it because I feel like I haven't played a ton of Hama. If we go Hama and we also grab a feint, we can either go the boomed and trumpeted or the feint to kind of be part of that defensive package. And then we can discard Elven Light if we put that back in. That's pretty cool. Do you have Silver Heart to regain the discarded Kurdan card? I oh I do. I do. I didn't even think about that. Great call. Yeah. Let's go Silver Heart. Hama is solid. I heard that he used to not have a limit on how many times he could do it. Sounds awesome. <laughs> what am I looking for? Silverheart. Where are you, Silverheart? There's so many S cards in Lord of the Rings. Learning a bit. Haven't played this in an age. Yeah, it's good stuff. I believe that we can find it. Hey, there it is. Probably run 2x of this just for consistency's sake. Did I miss? Silver lamp? Close. I believe that we can find it. If not, we'll just grab the one from the binder. There it is. We don't have any treachery cancels. We don't have like any green cards either. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I think our the majority of our cards are going to be paid for through blue or purple. We have some red stuff, but we really don't have, outside of the ints, any green, which may be enough. I believe they limited Hama because he completely shut down the Balrog. <laughs> nice. That's really funny. Um, we also have Treebeard as a resource kind of generator. Um, uh, we were going to grab Faint. And that can be a defensive option for us. So that's three, six, seven. Three more cards. We don't have any allies other than the Ents. We could go with like Northern Tracker if we wanted to. Denethor, Treebeard, and uh, we're actually going Denethor, Kurdan, and Hama, Den uh, and Treebeard as the ally. This is our lineup. We're gonna we're gonna try it. Uh, Istari really really wanted us to run Denethor, and so here we are. I tried some Marvel Champions custom content. Got to say the Move Knight fan pack was fun and we need some street level heroes. You can play Defenders, but it requires using Spider-Woman Justice Protection. Yeah, I think Defenders are I think Defenders are on their way. Um I'm I'm actually I'm really really pumped to see Defenders. Uh we we were going to grab Unexpected Courage and we never did. I think Unexpected Courage for Curden is important here. Um Have one more slot. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, we have one more. You can't play Lord of the Rings without Denethor. That's that is true. I read that somewhere. <laughs> um anything in green? Or honestly, we probably could get away with running like a a song of the spirit one. Did I grab Light of Valinor? I didn't. That's amazing. That's a that's the, that is the right call, Jared. I yeah, that one completely slipped my mind. Light of Valinor for Curtain is incredibly good. Yes, hundred percent. That uh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Great call. This is this is why I like having y'all here because that yeah, hundred percent. So Light of Valinor, you can attach to a Noldor or a Sylvan character, and they do not exhaust to quest. So you kind of get around the need of unexpected courage to ready um, 
Kurt in. That being said, I think Unexpected Courage can also still work. There are too many good cards to include, right? Uh, I think Unexpected Courage the um, is still pretty good for Denethor. Good problem to have. Yeah, right? Burning Brand. Burning Brand. What is Burning Brand? I think that's the two cost here, right? A Burning Brand attached to a lore character after exhaust Burning Brand to cancel a shadow effect just triggered during an attack, which the attached character is defending. I think Denethor... Are you still doing progression? Yes. And so I've opened the deluxe expansion here, but but no more. On Denny is fun. I don't know if how frequently I'm gonna be defending with Denethor. I guess potentially. I'm I'm a little concerned with how how I guess they will hit fairly hard threes he has a three defense i feel like okay so he can defend against most of, he can defend against most of these guys without a uh okay we'll grab burning brand we're gonna probably just grab one x maybe three two maybe two x but that can be a backup defensive option if our if our ints fail or i mean just from a this a start may not be worth it i think it's i think i mean like it, it's nice to have the backup option and denethor there it is denethor i don't know if he can be a reliable defender with shadow card effects and so being able to um being being able to have a reliable defender that I can cancel those shadow cards, I think is at least worth having in there as flexibility. He can use the shield. Oh yeah, because he's Gondor. That's interesting. Do you think Burning Brand? Not sure if he's gonna be Shield. I don't know with the enemies that I saw with the enemies that I saw I don't think that we need both a shield and a burning brand and I would rather go into green here than the shield because I think that Hama is going to be using more or like we're, we're we have more red cards to pay for than what we have in the deck because of Hama's ability and so I'm thinking that we go with the burning brand there that puts us at I think 53 2 4 6 8 10 12 13 so we're looking for three cards to cut out that could be a copy of tree beer that could be a copy of nara that could be there's quite a bit of location this one if i recall right yeah i think there are i think there are and so northern tracker could also be pretty interesting i think we went pretty heavy with the questing i was wondering where you went glad you're still active josh from modern maple hey how's it going how you doing josh welcome 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 yeah, had some vacation and then some work and then we're here. Good stuff. Nick Gandalf. Two, four, six, eight, ten. He was all <laughs> nice. Two, four, six, eight, ten. What are we cutting? What are we cutting, my friends? Um I do, yeah, I do like the, we could cut a Nara, um, Nara Burning Brand, and hits you hard on direct damage, tough enemies, locations, and the extra loss condition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, we could cut out a tree beard. I think I would rather cut out a maybe like a wandering int. Do we grab three or just I 
Oh, Wellington Preserver with Curden is really interesting because Wellington Preserver, after he readies, or after it readies, you get to heal a damage from end character. So you get to ready twice around with Curden. That's really interesting. How's my resource generation? I do have uh, Steward. I have Steward. We could cut out Dern Dingle. I like Dern Dingle. We could cut out a boomed and trumpeted. We have three of those, right? Yeah, we have three copies of that. Cut those out. And then with the extra card draw, I think we'll be okay. Did you have any interest in X Seekers of Fortune? Maybe up your alley. Curious. If, I have not. I don't even know. I have not heard of that. What is, what is that? Alrighty. Good evening. Have a great day. Thank you. Hope you're doing well, Levi. Our starting threat is going to be 29. Let's pop that up. New TCG sort of Indiana Jones thing. That's cool. No, I, I have not seen that. That that sounds really cool. Do you know who's publishing it or is it somebody new? From Mega Moth Studios. Very cool. Alrighty. Is and I assume it's competitive? Like a, a race for treasure type thing? That sounds kind of fun. Yeah, I did I did play Primal on Man vs. Meeple. I think I am really enjoying Primal. Primal is a monster hunter LCG, and it uh, it's it's pretty good. It's very very solid. There's a lot of record keeping, but as like we kind of were saying, the juice is definitely worth the squeeze there. Sweet, they'll be at uh, Pax U. Sweet, yeah, I'll be at Pax U. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. I'm happy to hear that you're gonna be there. That's gonna be fun. Nice. All righty, so. That's going to go up there. Let's read 1A, The Desert of Harad. You have escaped from Umbar and thrown your pursuers off by fleeing into the desert, but many barren miles lie between you and the other side. To turn back is to walk into the arms of the Haradrim. You set out on a dangerous desert crossing. Each player searches the encounter deck for a copy of Burnt Sands and adds it to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck, place the heat tracker next to the quest deck, and set the temperature to 10. Red is going to be heat. Alrighty, so red in this scenario, this is going to be our heat. And then we're going to use the black tracker to track uh, progress and then threats on the screen. So this is going to be our heat tracker. This is going to be our progress tracker. Cool. We've got burnt sands. Well, the temperature is 40 or higher. We're starting at 10. It gets plus two to the threat and starts out at two threat. After Burn Sand becomes the active location, increase the temperature by two. I do think, yeah, I think Northern Trackers would be pretty decent in this quest. After an ally enters play, either exhaust it or deal one damage to it. And then at the end of the round, increase the temperature by four. And then we're, we got these from By the Same Token for Marvel Champions, but I'm going to use this here so that we don't forget to increase the, the, uh, the temperature. We've got Curdan, Hama, and Denethor. Curdan allows us to draw an additional card at the resource phase, but we do have to discard one of the cards that we drew. So instead of one, we're drawing two. For Denethor, we can exhaust Denethor to look at the top card of the encounter deck. I can move that card to the bottom of the deck. And then Hama is after Hama is declared as an attacker, return a tactics event from your discard pile to your hand, then choose and discard one card from your hand. Limit three times per game for the group. Why? I wonder why that's. I wonder why that's stated for the group. Why does that not just say? Why does that not just say limit three times per game? Why do they have the caveat per group? You can't have multiple hamas on the table. Oh, if you change of fortune. Is change of fortune your discard pile or anybody's discard pile, where you can pull back a hero from the discard pile? Is that what they're trying to solve there?
Alrighty. We need eight progress to go through the desert of Harad. And we're going to start us out. Let's go. I love Lord of the Rings. It's so good. We got six cards. Two, four, six. We got Galadrium's Greeting, Elven Light, a Good Harvest, Tree Beard, Wandering Ant, and a Wandering Ant. Oh, hmm. interesting. I do like having Tree Beard. Uh, I do like having True Beard here. I do like having the Wandering Ints. We can drop a Wandering Int on... No, we can drop a Tree Beard on turn two. Um, We can probably drop a Wandering Int on turn two. How do we feel about the cards? Card... Or hand. Oh, hand. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm discarding it. Um, You can pass other players with the zero-cost Spirit Event from the... Oh! Nice. Laura Aragon is once per game, so other players can use him if you pass him. But Hama is... Oh, that's that's pretty cool. That's that's actually really fun. I like that. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan here. Uh, I like having tree beard. But if I mulligan into not a tree beard... And I will be drawing two cards every round. But I also like the idea of being able to draw into an elven light and discarding that one. We're going to mulligan, but let's see what we would have had. A booming ent and a dern dingle. Let's go ahead and mulligan and hopefully we can get a tree beard back. But also with that with that uh with that play, we didn't really have anything that we could drop on turn one, which may be just this deck. I don't know if the deck has a turn one drop. Now that I'm thinking about it. All right, we got three, six. And we are stuck with this. This is our hand. We got Gandalf, the Wellington Preserver. Uh very a good harvest booming int we got a sneak attack and we got the tree beard Alrighty, we did not get the ring so sneak attack is dead in our hand which is a little sad but hopefully we'll be able to cycle to it fairly quickly during the resource phase we're all gonna get some money because we do like money and we're gonna draw two cards we got glorifendal and wandering we're gonna discard glorifendal because glorifendal can be paid for or played from our discard pile We do have Tree Beard. We're not gonna be we're not gonna be able to uh, play Tree Beard this round. But what we could potentially do is we only need to carry over one resource so that we can drop Tree Beard next turn. So we could go a very good harvest to drop either a Wandering Int, a Booming Int, um, to save those resources. I don't think I don't think that's the worst idea. I I, I really don't. Um, the other thing that I just realized is that with Curtin needing to discard a card with Hama, you can actually discard the tactics events and be fairly okay with that decision, knowing that you can pull them back. Hmm. Or we just bite the bullet because if we don't play anything. I feel like we I feel like I want to get wandering it out onto the table. Um I never got in drought. I definitely should have done that for Denethor, but here we are. Um We are we're we're gonna just try and push through this here. So let's go ahead and Use Denethor's ability. We're going to look at the top card of the encounter deck. It's going to be another Burnt Sands. And we will be okay with that. So we're going to keep it on the top of the deck. But we know it's not an enemy. And, ooh, that's a... I found the Glare team. I found the Glare. It's right here. Um, so we, we actually can uh, quest and be okay here. So let's just go ahead and move into the quest phase. I'm going to quest with Kurdan for four and Hama for one. So that's going to be five. Burnt Sands is going to come in. We're showing four, so we'll place one progress here. Um, We can travel. I think that's probably worth it. Let's go ahead and travel to Burnt Sands. When we do that, we do have to raise our temperature by two. I've not played 
Lorathor as much. How do you like him, Nelson? I like Lorathor. I like Lorathor. I think the ability to look and see what you need to do for the round just gives you a lot of flexibility. Alrighty, at the end of the round, we're going to increase our threat to 30. We're going to unexhaust everybody. We are going to not forget this and increase this to 16. That's going up faster than I kind of wanted to. At the top of the round, we're going to get money. I'm going to draw a Gladium's Greeting and a Wellingham Preserver. Do we have a Greeting? We don't have a Greeting. We do have a Gandalf, which I think in this situation could probably be used as threat reduction if we need him to be. So let's go ahead and... Toss this. I think I'd rather have the ability to play the preserver. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is we are going to go Hama and Curtin. So that's four to play Treebeard. Treebeard enters play exhausted. And then we also have to trigger this. After an ally enters play, we're going to have to deal a damage to him. But we can pay two resources from Treebeard's pool to ready an end character. And we can use resources from Treebeard to play and characters. That being said, we're going to spend... Oh, no. Wellington is three. That's fine. Um, we're going to go ahead and spend two to play Wandering Int. Comes in exhausted and also needs a damage here. Then next turn, if we need to, we can use a very good harvest to throw... The Wellingham Preserver out there. So. We got Denethor. Let's go ahead and use. Let's go ahead and use Denethor to look at the top card of the deck. When revealed, each player discards the hand or assigns X damage among characters where X is the number of cards in his hand. Two, four, six. I don't hate it. Honestly, um, I don't, I'm not discarding my hand. Um, well, no, it's not worth discarding my hand. It's six damage passed out. We can go three here. Treebeard's probably not defending too, too much. We can go one here. That's four. And we have two damage probably on Hama or Curtin. That's not horrible. That's not horrible. Let's keep it because it's the, it's the, you know, evil we know. So we are showing two. We're going to quest for five. We're going to pop this out. I'm going to go two, four, six damage. I'm going to go two, three, four. Five, six. We're, we're probably going to do that. Okay. We're showing two. So three passes. We're going to clear that. And... We'll go ahead and travel here, raising the heat up to 18. Yeah, that heat is going pretty quick. I don't, I don't, I don't love it. End of the round, we're gonna go up to 31. We're going to ready everybody. Pass out money, including Treebeard. Curtain, we're gonna draw a sneak attack. And a Booming Ent. We're going to toss... Oh, Booming Ent is going to be so much damage. We already have a Booming Ent. But, I, yeah, we're going to toss Booming Ent. Mainly because once once I set it up, we can sneak attack Gandalf twice. That feels good. Uh, we're going to use a good harvest. Uh, name a sphere. We're going to name the Lore Sphere. And resources can be paid. So we're going to go one, two, three and play Wellington Preserver. It's going to come in exhausted, and we're going to give him a damage. But that's going to start healing some of our other Ents out here. We, I just want to get that going. Before that, I probably should have Denethor to see what was coming. Each player assigns X damage, where X is the tens digits of the... N oh, and we forgot to do this. So we're at 22. So we're going to, we're going to be assigning two damage, but that's it's not horrible. It's not horrible. All right.
So we got four, five, nine. We're going to assign two damage. Let's go one, two. Hey, hey, giant lasagna. Six whole months. I see six month streak. That is crazy. That is crazy. Awesome. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. We quested for nine. We were showing zero. Three goes here. And then six goes here. We're going to be one away from just moving on from this quest. Kind of wish I had one more. Treebeard resources can be used with good harvest. I guess so. Yeah. I used it to pay for an int, so it works regardless. But yeah, name a sphere until the end of the phase. You can spend resources of any sphere. No, I guess he's not. It's not a sphere resource. So no. So no, you cannot. Um, I guess that also means that like any like Gandalf can't be used with good harvest, but he can be used to pay for ints, and I've used him to pay for an int. And that's cleared. We'll stand up. When we ex unexhaust uh, the preserver, we'll heal one from Treebeard. And then we'll go up to 26. And 32. Yeah, yeah. That would be really cool, though. If, if Treebeard or, like, those allies, Radagast or whatever, can who can collect resources can be paid for with a good harvest, that'd be insane. That'd be awesome. Um, but I don't think it works because it does name Sphere Resources. All right, let's pass out some money. Let's get a ring. Let's get a ring. We got Light of Eleanor. That also works. And an Elven Light. We're going to discard Elven Light. Uh, that worked out well. Let's go one for a Light of Valinor. Means we don't have to exhaust to commit to the quest now with Curtain. Gandalf can be used with a good harvest once he has his ring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good call. Because he, he gets leadership. Yeah, good call. Denethor. It's going to show us a craft remedy. Treat the printed text box of each damage character as if it were blank except for traits. When this stage is defeated, heal one damage from each character in play. This does not surge, which is kind of interesting. Um, we need a resource from Treebeard. Okay, so if we do that... Hmm. Um it doesn't yeah, so what are what are we we're we're basically everything is blanked, which is not great. Um we could quest on it pretty hard next round. Also Okay, hold on, hold on. With Craft Remedy, because it states that the text box is blank, then can I attach restricted attachments to ints because that part is blanked out? I think so. That seems kind of exploitable. I don't know. Um, can I want my Wellington Preserver to be running around with a, a shield or something? I don't know. That just seems funny to me. Um... I think the healing is going to be kind of important. The other thing is, is that once we, once we go to stage two, we're going to start assigning three damage. That, that temperature is going fast. I don't, I didn't realize how fast that was going to be going. I think we, I think we need to, It's a full round that we're not questing on the main. I think we're going to discard this. All right, it's bottom of the deck. I'm slowly getting back into Harry Potter and the Hogwarts world in general. I'm still convinced that FFG is crazy for not doing a Hogwarts LCG yet. Oh my gosh, yeah. 
like a uh, Arkham Horror style. Mm. Each expansion could add something like Hogsmeade, Azkaban. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I believe you could, but they're restricted with fall off. Are you sure? Oh, because it says cannot have restricted attachments, but it, I, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, for some reason, I thought it, you could not play restricted attachments, but yeah. Cool. Um, okay. We could. I think we probably want to play the booming end just to give ourselves a little bit more health to work with, just in case that top card is. some sort of enemy potentially i don't know i'm i kind of want to keep that on the top now or not throw it on the bottom because then we kind of know what it is because i think at this point i'm not really ready to take an enemy i could defend with treebeard but then we're, we're not getting the healing we're not getting the money from treebeard i think uh it's probably worth not doing that okay Okay, let's go Hama and Treebeard to play Booming Int. Comes into play Exhausted. We will deal a damage to it. And then next round, we'll have enough money to play another Wellington Preserver, which will be nice. And Booming Int right now has two, three, four, five, six attack. So that's good. I need my ring. I need my ring. Um... Okay, we will quest with Kurdan and Wellington Preserver. Yeah. So that's going to be seven showing zero. We're going to flip into a three, the giant scorpion. It's not actually going to engage us. After it damages the character, that character cannot ready until the end of the round. Cool. Okay. Hate that. But that could be a Gandalf snipe pretty easily. We don't have to worry about it. We will go ahead and push. And when revealed, increase the temperature by two. We shuffle this into the encounter deck discard pile and we reveal one encounter card per player. So. Whew. We could take the scorpion. We could, hmm. When it says it cannot ready until the end of the round, does that mean that it misses the refresh phase? And so it's ready and it's not ready and you cannot ready until the end of the next round. It's effectively exhausted for a full round. I think that is what we realized last time, right? Card that we reveal, Sand Viper. Players cannot declare defenders against the Sand Viper. I hate that. After the players travel to a location, Sand Vipers engages the first player. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's super thematic. Shows a four. Um, probably using Gandalf to kill that thing. At the end of the round, increase temperature by four. Then each player assigns X damage among characters he controls. Their X is the tens digit of the temperature. Miss the refresh phase. You're exhausted for the next round. Got it. Okay. Um... We could take it with Treebeard. Um, it could be a very sad loss if we do lose Treebeard. But there's a chance that he doesn't even damage us. And then I think this I think this is the time to I really think that this is the time to try and take that scorpion. Especially now that we have the sand viper out here. I think we want to use Gandalf to try and uh snipe the sand viper. So I think we're gonna risk uh Treebeard here. Welling Hall Preserver. Correct. You missed the refresh phase. Welling Hall Preserver. Yeah, what about him? Okay. 
Okay, let's go ahead and engage here. Um, we are going to... Do we have any tactics? We don't have any tactics events in our uh, discard pile, so not worth really drawing the card. So let's go ahead and defend with Treebeard. Give me three. No shadow effect. Excellent. Love it. We got three, four, five, six, seven, which is enough to take them out. Awesome. Ooh. We're going to stand up at the end of the round. When Welling Hall on exhaust, we're going to ready, or we're going to uh, heal one from. I, I think it's always going to be ints, because I think ints are going to be what we soak, especially once we have that second uh, preserver on the table. We can start to heal a lot of that damage that is being thrown out at us. Let's just go ahead and go Treebeard. Um, I think he's probably the safe one. Um, okay, so we're going to go up four here. So we're going to go to 32, and we have to assign three damage. Let's go one, two, three. Okay. Increase our threat to 33. We're going to pass out money at the start of the round. Don't forget Treebeard. We're going to draw a Treebeard and a Treebeard. All right, we're going to discard Treebeard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I want my I want my ring. All right, Denethor is going to take a look at the top card of the deck. Discards his hand or assigns X damage among characters he controls where X is the number of cards in his hand. That's that's harder to stomach at this point. Um There's a world in which we discard the hand. Um, we can play another Wellington Preserver, but then we're we're only taking four damage. We can go one on the Wellington Preserver. Yeah, I like keeping it there. We can make a huge push on the main right now, and I think that's what we need to do. We're going to play Wellington. Um, do we just discard the hand? That does lose the Gandalf. The other option would be to play Gandalf with these resources there. Um, we're going to, we would lose, oh, we can play Gandalf and then throw all the damage on Gandalf or most of the damage on Gandalf. That's, I think that's the better move there. Um, we can maintain the sneak attacks. We have two more copies of Gandalf in here. So yeah, I, I absolutely think that's the play. So we go Gandalf, we go with, uh, we snipe this guy. And then we we push so hard on the main. <laughs> Those Wellington Preservers have to work overtime on the damage. Can only heal int characters. Yeah, I don't think I healed a non-int character, right? I've been healing Treebeard, who is int, yeah. Um... I believe you could, but the restricted would fall out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we're going to play Gandalf. So let's go five and play Gandalf. We're going to deal four damage here. Um, and then we're going to we're gonna have to assign four damage. We can go... Th we can go f all four on Gandalf, actually. Oh, no, because he's going to... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. That, that's gone. On stage two, it's gone. Uh, so, yeah, we can, we can snipe Gandalf... Um, be okay with that. Alrighty. Um, we're going to have to assign three damage at the end of the round, which is going to be annoying. And go like two, three. We have damage that we can throw out there, but I'm, I'm very happy that we're going to be pushing really hard this round. Alrighty. Let's, uh, let's use this to count it up. We got one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, uh, and one. And 
actually, we don't even have to exhaust Hama, but we will push through that. Um, I think that's going to get us one of the sandworms. If we get... Oh, what are the weir worms? Those are the XXX. Um, but what do they engage on? Hey, Magic Moose Moo, how's it going? I think regardless, what we can do is we can not quest here. We still have enough, and we can block if we absolutely need to. But I definitely should remember what those worms do, because then we'd be able to... I think they're pretty low engagement. Okay, so we'll we'll be able to use Wandering Int as the block. We'll lose Wandering Int. Uh, honestly, we could actually block with Curtain. We could block with Curtain. It's going to have a three attack. And they attack twice. That's lame. Uh, okay, we'll we'll keep wandering it out there then. Okay. Uh, so we will reveal this, assign the four damage to Gandalf, um, and move on. Increase temperature by two. We're gonna search the deck and discard pile, and victory display, for a werewolf. Wereworm engages at 22 and adds it to the staging area. X is the uh, 10 digits of the temperature. So right now it's a 3335. After it engages you, uh, deal it a shadow card. Do not deal it a shadow card. Okay, cool. Sweet. And then during the quest, add X threat to the total threat in the staging area where X is the tens digits of the temperature. At the end of the round, we increase by four. While a wereworm is in play, players cannot defeat this stage. And then players defeat the stage, they win the game. And if the temperature is 60 or higher, we lose. You do lose four willpower. Wait, do I lose four willpower there? Okay, I'll throw one on Curdan and keep Gandalf around. Put it on Denethor instead. Cool. Alrighty. So the Wereworm is going to engage us. We will block with Curdan for this first attack. We'll take one damage. And then he's going to get a Shadow card. And we will block with the Int. No Shadow effect, but the Int will die. And then we've got a attacker of the booming int coming in at two, three, four, five, which will deal two damage to it. And there we go. Oh, we're not assigning the damage anymore, too. That's also nice. I didn't even think about that. End of the round, Gandalf is going to go hang out. And do Gandalf things. Um, Wellingham Preserver is going to ready. We're going to heal one from Treebeard. Going to ready up everybody else. Increase our threat to 34. Um, increase this threat here to 38. And so we're showing three now. Um... At the, uh, we went to 34. We're going to draw into a Gandalf. Love that. And an Elrond's Council. We're going to take the Gandalf just because now we have a Gandalf. And Gandalf seems pretty good. We're going to pass out money. Um, Denethor is going to exhaust to take a look at the top card. Find water. Characters cannot be ready by player card effects. And the stage is defeated. Each player readies one hero he controls. I'm okay with that. I'm I'm a hundred percent okay with that. That doesn't surge or anything. So we're looking at 16. We potentially could quest through it this round. Um the wereworm is going to attack. I think we want to probably defend with Treebeard on that attack. We don't have enough money to throw a Gandalf out. 
So let's go ahead and just use the tree beard and Denethor resources to play a Wellingham Preserver who's going to enter play Exhausted. We can start doing some more of that healing. Um, hmm. Okay. So we, we, we know that that's happening. We need a defense option for the Wereworm. Which is going to be Treebeard. Treebeard has a couple of options. I'm guessing that there's a shadow effect that could probably take them out, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, but we could heal a good bit. How much can we quest for? We can quest for four, six, nine. 10 so we can't push through we're only showing seven so i think we're gonna i think we're just gonna have tree beard do tree beard things hide in tree beard <laughs> yeah i think we're gonna have tree beard block the wereworm the booming int is going to be able to deal two more damage hama can deal the three We have any tactics? We don't have any tactics in here, so there's nothing that we can return. We could use Curdan to draw using the Elven Light that's in our discard pile. That is an option. Um, I think we're just going to save these two. Treebeards are blocker. We have another Treebeard in hand, honestly, if worse comes to worse. I don't actually... I don't even know if I'd play the second Treebeard. If we, if we lose Treebeard... If we lose Treebeard, are we actually in any sort of problem? I don't know if we are. Okay. I think that kind of answers the question. I don't think if Treebeard leaves the game, we have a Gandalf drop next turn, which can solve a lot of problems. Yeah, we're just going to we're just going to hang out. We cannot ready by player card effects, which is fine right now. Treebeard and unexpected courage may change that equation, but I think we're within striking distance. So let's uh let's go. Uh there should be totally a Hobbit event that lets you hide in an end hero. Be like, <laughs> and then he takes one damage from throwing. That'd be great. Yes. Hun, I'm so here. <laughs> if we <use> was tomatoes. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and quest with Curdan for four. One, two, three, four. And then the preserver is going to go one, two, three. We are showing three. This is going to come in. This is find water. Characters cannot be readied. By player card effects. When the stage is completed, each player readies one hero he controls. Comes in with six. We are showing three, so we're going to put four here. <laughs> this is... Alrighty. We're going to use Mr. Beard to block the Wereworm that is attacking for three. Either increase the temperature by two or return the attacking enemy to the staging area after this attack. Let's go ahead and just increase it by two. That's going to put him actually at attacking for four. So we will take one damage on Treebeard there. But I'm okay with that. Um, does that mess with my defense strategy? So we have uh, two, three, four, five, eight. So that'd be four damage. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. Um, yeah. I'm good with that. So we're going to go three, eight to take the Wereworm out. And here we are. End of the round. Threat goes up to 35. Um, temperature goes up to 44, which I assume is Celsius because that's hot. We're going to stand up. When we ex uh, when we ready the Wellington Preservers, we're going to go ahead and heal two from Treebeard. Top of the round, we're going to see a another Wellington Preserver and a Silver Harp. We're going to take the Preserver. We're going to go money for everybody. Everybody gets money. Okay. Uh, Denethor is going to check. Denethor is going to see what we got here. Uh, surge, when revealed, increase the temperature by four. That does surge. Oh, that's that's tough. 
So I think we just put this on the bottom, right? Because we're going to get the second card no matter what. Might as well not increase the temperature. But that does mean that we are going into the quest blind. We're playing Lord of the Rings like normal now. <laughs> uh, so we could play Gandalf. Honestly, we may just drop a Gandalf here. Um, if we drop Gandalf, we could draw cards. I don't know if that actually helps too much. Um, hmm. What are we questing for? So 2, 5, 8, 12, 13. Minus 4 is 9. That could place 13. If we add 4, that could be 17. Honestly, we could... If we draw something that does not have any threat, we could push out uh, and we could like um, win here with the Gandalf drop. Um, if we draw a enemy, we are in a lot of trouble. So I don't think we're going to go for the win this round. I think we're going to be looking at it for next turn and kind of maintain some of our defensive options. Uh, Gandalf still could be one of those defensive options. I think we're probably... Not, we're not going to drop Gandalf, but let's go ahead and spend one to play Elven Light from our discard pile. It's going to allow us to draw into a Beach Bone. Um, I don't think I'm going to play Beach Bone. I think I need more tactics events to trigger Hama's ability. <laughs> um, all righty, let's. Uh, we could drop. Well, we can drop Beach Bone next turn. Um, we could drop it this turn with Tree Beard, and then we we then could drop Wellington Preserver next turn as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna spend three to play Beach Bone. Enters play exhausted. Then um, that's also four four health that we can go. I actually kind of want an AOE kind of spread because then we can pump the booming end up even more. Then with the resource we get from Denethor and Treebeard, we can play Wellington Preserver next turn. And then at some point, we may get a ring, which would be kind of crazy. We could sneak attack some stuff. We don't know what's on the top of the deck, so we have to be a little careful. We're going to quest with Curdan for four. I'm going to go Wellington Preserver up to 7. There's 10. Um, Treebeard's our defense. I think that's what we're going to do. We're showing 4. Knowing next turn we have a pretty decent push that we can make. Um, do we want to... I don't think we care about fine water, actually. So, yeah. We're just going to quest on the main... Showing 10, or quest for 10, showing 4. Let's go ahead and flip into. Discard the active location. Shuffle the discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard cards from the top until a location is discarded. Make that location the active location. Okay. I'm going to just put this here. I think that's how I'm going to start denotating the... Because active location goes here. Just imagine if you had grappling hook on the booming end. <laughs> yeah. Also hilarious idea and headcanon of like just booming our ints just using grappling hooks to siege ships i'm here for that yeah that's pretty cool all right we're gonna discard cards until we get a location we're gonna make it the active location there we go right there uh so this is the parched wood uh, after it becomes the active location shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and discard cards until you get a creature enemy no while it's in the staging area, each creature gets plus one. Okay, so we're going to get a creature enemy. There you go. There's the worm. Ow. Ooh, that's tough. Um, resolution. We are showing eight. We quested for ten, so two goes here. We don't even push through. Yikes. And he's going to attack twice. Uh-oh. All righty. Well, that's kind of fun. Alrighty, this is going to engage. We're going to defend with uh, Curdan. 
taking a damage because he does not get the shadow effect the first round. And then we're going to defend with Treebeard on the actual attack for four. No shadow effects. So we do take one damage there. That's fine. Uh, Hama and Booming Int are going to... We have to do nine. Booming Int is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we, we don't have it. Oh my gosh. That's so sad. Yeah, we don't we don't have it. Curtin would wait, why would Curtin die? Oh, because it's a four. Oh shoot, you're right. Okay, we're gonna block with the booming int. Um the booming int will die. And then we'll block with tree beard. For some reason I still thought they only had three. Then we will attack with Hama and Curtin to deal the damage. And then we can Gandalf on next turn. Yeah. Well, that wasn't great. That was actually what I would call bad. Um, cool. End of the round. This is going to go up to 48. We're going to increase to 36. We have to take out the uh, Wereworm. That was a that was a wombo combo right there. We're gonna draw unexpected courage and a sneak attack. We're gonna toss the sneak attack. I can't I can't hang on to sneak attacks anymore. We don't have the ring. I think if we do lose, I'm going to throw a second ring in here. Uh, once these two readied, we're gonna heal Treebeard. Perfect. Okay, uh, Denethor, let's see what you got. Denethor is going to show us a Towering Dunes. While it's in the staging area, progress cannot be placed on locations in the staging area, not named Towering Dunes. After it becomes the active location, reveal the top card of the encounter deck. That's going to show three, so we're looking at seven. I'm wondering... I think we... I think we... I never passed out money. I think we play Gandalf here. We snipe the Wereworm, get rid of that, get rid of that threat. And then we're going to be looking at... Um, we need... A f we have effectively a 4, 7, 8 buffer. And we need 12 progress. So if we can quest for 20, we win the game. We got 4, 5, 7, 10... 15 we have 19 with gandalf Ugh, so close but then we're set up pretty good next turn yeah we're definitely doing that so let's go ahead and drop everything for a gandalf gandalf enters play we're going to deal four damage here we know we don't need to defend so we're going to quest out Woo! Alrighty. Let's count this bad boy up. We got one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four. So that's 19. We are showing four. I'm going to flip here for seven. So we add 12. We got 11 here, so this goes to 15. Yep, cool, I did my math correctly the first time. I'm not traveling here. Uh, we're just gonna stand up, increase our threat. When the Wellingham Preserver is ready, we'll heal. Now our booming int, our booming int is gone, so we don't actually care about having having uh damage ends anymore okay this goes up to 52 it's getting hot it's getting hot 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 um top of the round let's pass out some money we're gonna draw into a dern dingle or a dern dingle let's take a dern dingle 
Denethor is going to tell us if we win the game. We've got each player exhaust a character he controls and deals one damage to that character. Let's just not have unexhausted characters. Um, and I think we can just quest out. Let's have some fun. Let's go ahead and get a preserver in there just for fun. And uh, let's quest. So we got four, six, nine, twelve, fourteen, fifteen points. We are showing eight. Uh, we don't have any unexhausted characters because oh, I guess it's Curdan. Curdan is <laughs> Curdan is deal one damage to him. Um. So that's 15, showing 8. We place 7 progress. And we're... There you go. That's win. I did like that quest. I did like that quest. I mean, this was way closer than I was thought. Tomatoes in the chat for... <laughs> uh, yeah, like this was... This was this was a fun little timer. This was a fun little timer here with the um, needing to win. We had... We had two rounds left in us at the standard rate of acceleration, but there's a lot of cards in there that mess with it. So that was cool. I, I like it, but I, it is a good quest. I, I really enjoyed the quest. Yeah. I think Denethor worked out really, really well. Um, yeah, I think I would modify the deck. I don't think it's the strongest deck we've ever played. Uh, temperature is always tight based on your experience. That's awesome. Then that that's, that's good to hear, right? Because you want it to be consistent. Um, I was a little concerned with the slow nature of the ends. I think if I was going to re modify the deck a little bit, I would add in another copy of the ring of power here to make sure that we can get that. Um, but yeah, Curtin reading the preservers to heal just solves all your problems. We'd have to we'd have to quest through find water if we did that. Denethor came in clutch. I mean, just knowing how much you need to quest for is so powerful. It's so so powerful. Um, yeah, and if we didn't drop the card that added four temperature, then we would have. If we did not win this round, we would have lost the game because, and so being able to manipulate that, but I really like Curtin with the, the ends. I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Where are my rings? There's one third from bottom. Okay. We, we, our rings were pretty buried. So I would go one more ring. I'd go one more ring, potentially a master of the forge for the silver harp, the rings, the light of Valinor's that just helps you get a little bit set up and then. You can, and steward, master and unexpected courage. I think master of the forge also probably makes it in here. Um, anything that I, the hard part is, is like I don't know what to cut. I potentially could cut out a good harvest. Um, and then I don't think, I mean, tactics, got us uh, the booming end. That being said. You may be able to just get away with Treebeard and add a good harvest and then not go tactics. If you go, um, I would probably go Biosphere. And honestly, probably go double lore with, I mean, like with all the lore stuff, I think I would go double lore and be able to drop those even better. And then you could preserve Treebeards to drop the booming ends. Just go Elrond to pay for all the allies. Oh yeah, yeah, Elrond, dude, that'd be sick. That'd be that'd be really really cool. I like Elrond. He's so crazy. Um, I do want to play the all the Rings of Power deck with Curtin or Gandalf, Elrond, and uh, Gladriel. That just sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, access to everything but tactics at that point, right? You get spirit, spirit leadership with Curdan. Gandalf could be basic. You could play tactics there. And I think uh, Gladriel gets lore with her, right? Gandalf, Elrond, Gladriel is a crazy deck. It sounds like, yeah. It, I mean, because, yeah, you're paying so many. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be sick. 
We may we may try that next next time. That sounds a lot of fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. Sweet. Oh, I love this game. I will be back on Friday. We're going to be doing some Spirit Island Spirit Island on Friday. I don't know what I'm playing yet, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, I may put out a poll, actually, to see what we want to see played. That sounds fun. Gandalf with Elrond to see that, see what Vilia gets is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've played that. I don't think I've ever added Galadriel into that team, but I have played the Gandalf-Elrond team up, and it was just bananas. Being able to use his... Uh, Either his pipe or his staff, whichever one. I think it's his pipe where you're allowed to swap the top card of your deck. And then you swap and then you Vilia. And it's just like, okay. Like, that was sick. And so I, yeah. No, I'm I'm a big fan of that combo. I kind of, yeah. I think I I think I kind of want to play that next turn. Or next, next game. I have no idea if it's going to be good. Because I have no idea what the next game looks like. But that does sound pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be back on... Friday with Spirit Island. Uh, next week, we should be back with Lord of the Rings to finish up the deluxe box, and then we'll have a opening. So that's going to be kind of cool. But yeah, I appreciate you all hanging out. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, see you around. Peace.